to my channel. So today I'm super, super excited to bring you guys this video. I have been wanting to get my hands on the Morphe 350 palette since Jacqueline and Manny have been absolutely raving about it. I've been definitely wanting to try it out, but it is so hard to get your hands on and I'm imagining that you guys are also experiencing the same issues and if you have the palette, you are a lucky. I know that the palette is $20 and has 35 shades, but it is so hard to get your hands on that I wanted to give you guys a drugstore alternative. So this is a drugstore slash Morphe 350 dupe slash fall makeup tutorial. So the total came out to be around $24 and the palette retails for $22. But considering that it's so hard to get your hands on and there's shipping to pay for and it has tax on it, I assumed that it was like gonna be around the same price point. Even though you don't get 35 shades with the dupes, you get primarily the same colors, which I really like. So I'm just gonna quickly talk about what the palettes are. I tried to get only stuff at Target because I know Target is most accessible to almost everyone. But the palettes that I got were were these two palettes and then one single eyeshadow but you don't need to get the single eyeshadow because it's actually kind of like the wrong color but it still works so the first palette that I got and is the, if you want to get one dupe for the Morphe 350 I'd recommend this palette it's the NYX Love in Paris palette and I don't know if it's called Merci Beaucoup it's the Love in Paris one it looks like this it's really really pretty as far as pigmentation goes it's all right like NYX definitely has better pigmented palettes but this one is pretty good for the price of it. Um, I want to say this is around $10 or $8, I want to say. So you get nine shades. It's a pretty good price. And for the quality, it's pretty much worth it. So obviously, I'm not going to find a palette in the drugstore with 35 shades. It looks just like the more 350. You kind of got to, you know, like work, work with me a little bit, you know? And then I also got this Wet n Wild palette in the shade. Oh my God, this is Fergie made this. It's in the shade Desert Festival. And I got this primarily because of this orange right here. There is a bright orange in the Morphe 350 that I was like, I just, I have to get any palette that has this in it. But also these other shades are really nice and there are a lot more muted shades in the palette as well. And then the other and like last shade that I got to kind of mimic that like those metallic colors in the palette is this one. It's the L'Oreal Infallible Eyeshadow in the shade Glistening Garnet. Um, this one is much more purple than I wanted it to be. I would much rather have it be more of like a cranberry shade, but I wanted everything from the drugstore and this was the most cranberry shade that I saw. This was the most expensive. It was like $8 just for one eyeshadow, which if you ask me is not drugstore price. That is outrageously expensive for drugstore. Those are the palettes that I use. I'm wearing it right now and I think it is a pretty good dupe for the More 55 Bow. I'm still going to try and get my hands on it and then I will be doing a video with that as well. But in the meantime, for all you people in the same boat as me who really want that palette and just cannot get your hands on it, this is what I can do for you guys. Alrighty, so I'm talking a lot. My hair is a mess. But without further ado, let's, oh my god. Without further ado, let's get on to the video. So I'm first going to go in with the Wet n Wild palette. I'm going to take this shade right here. I was really, really impressed with this. It's like a super nice transition shade. And like I said, I'm just popping this into my crease. And I'm using a MAC 222 with this. And we're just going to be applying it in windshield wiper motions. This is just going to help blend everything out. And this is actually a really pretty transition shade for everyday wear so it just gives you a nice little shadow and depth and dimension to your crease. Now I'm going to go in with this shade right here from the Paris palette. It's like peachy and orangey. It's definitely more peach and has a little bit of shimmer in it. I prefer it to be matte but you know you gotta work with what you gotta work with. You gotta work with what you have. Whatever. With this all that I'm going to do is place it in my lower crease below that transition shade and just buff that in there. This will begin the process of the warmer fall tones that we are moving on into. Then I'm gonna go in with a MAC 239 and I'm gonna take this shade right here. With this, all that I did was I put this on the outer third of my lid and I'm working it up to the crease just a little bit. And I'm just patting it on so it's a nice even application. Um, on this side, this is what I did, but then I ended up doing something a little bit different than I was anticipating doing. So this step is kind of unnecessary, but I'm just doing it because I did it on the other eye. You can actually skip this step, but I just want to make them even, so that's why I'm doing this. Um, you can do it if you want. It doesn't really make that big of a difference, I imagine. Okay, so I'm also just popping that on the inner 
third and then going in with that um, 222 again and just blending it out so that we don't have a harsh line right here on the inner corner that like really bothers me whenever I have that. Ugh, really bugs me. Now I'm going to take the infallible eyeshadow in the shade glistening garnet. With this I'm going to take that also on the 239. I'm first going to dip my brush in the eyeshadow and then I'm going to go in and spray it with Fix Plus just so that we don't get the product itself wet. We just get the brush with the product on it wet. And with this what I'm doing is I'm packing it onto the lid but I was originally just going to keep it in the center of the lid but then I started doing it and I was like and eh, not really feeling that so I'm putting it all over the lid and slowly working it up to the crease I don't really want it to go too far into the crease because having this wet makes it a metallic color and also just a smidge harder to blend out so we're just going to save ourselves the trouble and naturally feather it up to the crease so we don't have a ton of blending to do and we're just like making our lives easier for us like what's better than that honestly what's better than guys just being dudes <laughs> moving on to the bright orange this is the whole reason that i bought this palette not realizing this is actually a really great little palette to have so we're gonna take this shade right here and this is where we get the orange tones and this eye is really from this and what we're going to do with this is work it right on the crease. And then take a brush that has no product on it. This is a 224. It's a little bit fluffier. And just buff that all up. All right, so there we are. Now, um, you can leave it at this. I just thought it looked a little too... Bright. So I just took this bronzy brown and I'm popping it on the, I always say I'm popping it, I'm popping it. I'm applying this to the outer corner. I like catch myself saying I'm popping it since Jasmine tweeted me saying that she loves when I say that. So now it's like all that I like catch myself saying is I'm popping this here. But I am, I'm just popping it on the outer corner. For underneath my brow bone, I'm using this brush because I forgot the brush that I used over there and I don't feel like getting up and I have this one here. I'm going to take this iridescent color in the NYX palette. It's actually a really, really, really nice highlighter. And I'm placing it right underneath my brow bone and blending it down. And then I also put a little bit on the inner corner over here. I love this brush. It's like a gardening hoe. It's so fun. Like, it's really fun. Um, I first put this orange... Took it on the gardening hoe and I put it along the lower lash line. I put the orange on first because orange helps other colors pop more. And then I'm going to go back in with the L'Oreal Infallible Eyeshadow. Put that right over top of the orange. Okay, moving on, I'm going to rim my waterline with a black eyeliner. This is the NARS Larger Than Life Eyeliner in Via Benito. It's super, super black and it stays on for a long time. Not all day, but it stays on for a long time. Now I'm going to go in and line my upper lash line and wing it out with the NYX The Curve Eyeliner. I've heard a lot about this and I never got it. And then I went to Gem Beauty and it was in like the goodie bags and I tried it out and I really, really like it in the terms of the packaging of it. Like it's designed so that you can hold it right and it really, really does help a lot with applying eyeliner. So if you struggle a lot with um, winged eyeliner and liquid eyeliner. I would definitely suggest to try this out. I don't think it's too expensive. It shouldn't be more than $10, but I have a feeling it's like $11. Um, but it's actually really good and it's pretty black and it stays on for a long time. So I, I recommend it. Lastly, let's finish off with some mascara. If you guys noticed, my eyelash extensions are no longer with us, and that is because, um, honestly, they were more a pain in the butt than they were doing good to my image. I'm using a lot of mascaras right now. So the first one that I'm using is the Tightliner Mascara by It Cosmetics. I'm using this because it tightlines my eyes and it has um, something in it that makes your eyelashes grow. And anything that makes your eyelashes grow, I'm so into right now. So I'm going to apply this to my tight line and I'm going to also put it on my lower lashes in a bit. Then I'm going to go in with my favorite mascara. This is the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. So this makes my lashes look pretty good, but I like to add just a little something extra to them. So I've been using these Unique 
lashes. Um, they're basically like brush on false lashes. I'm gonna have a link to them down below. My mom sells them. <laughs> I don't know why, because like she bought like she bought these for me and she was like, oh I can also sell these. I can also sell these. So if you guys like want these, you can get them through my mom and like you have to know someone to get these, so the only person I know is my mom. My mom can get them for you. But anyway, what you guys do is you first take the actual like mascara part of this and you put this on your eyelashes as you would normal mascara. So once this is on, you're then going to go in with the false lash fibers. And I don't know if you guys can see. Let me get this focused for you. I don't know if you guys can see, but it's like fuzzy. Like, does that help you? It's like fuzzy. So, um... These are like false lash fibers, and what you do with this is while the mascara is still wet and tacky, you just put this on the ends of your lashes, and it makes them longer. And then you just set that with the mascara again, and it looks, it's called brush on false eyelashes. It doesn't obviously look like thick eyelashes, but it just naturally makes your lashes longer with no glue or anything. And Too Faced also has something similar to it, and I have the Too Faced one, but I prefer this one better, not because my mom sells it, because I think it's better. My mom literally started selling it because I told her how much I loved them. So, yeah, if you guys want them, like, my mom can hook you up with that. Also. So I really hope you guys Below. all enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and also let me know in the comments what other dupes of the Morphe 350 you guys have, and if you think this looks similar to a look that you could create with that palette. I think I did a pretty good job. I think that there is a little bit more room for improvement with that um, infallible eyeshadow, but it's okay. Things happen, you know? So thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye.